Hello everyone, uh, welcome to this uh, first edition this year of 2016 of the Extra Point. Yay! You guys excited to be back? Pumped! I am too. Yeah, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yes, I'm great. Yeah, that means it's almost college football time, <laughs> pro football time, high school football time. Um, speaking of high school football, uh, didn't you get a new gig? I did. I'm going to be helping out the most awesome Tracy Hayworth. If you don't know who that is, which you should. He used to play uh, for Tennessee, um, the University of Tennessee. He also went on to play at Detroit Lions. So a really cool dude. Um, and Al Tips, who is the, the head man over at WCDT. Um, so we're going to be doing play-by-play -play for Franklin County football. So you'll have to check us out. Um, 106.9 FM. And I think it's 1340 AM. But FM is really more important, I think. Um, so yeah, check us out. Um, People on the AM side of the aisle yeah. now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just, yeah. Come on. She's fixed to get some hate well, mail. I'm excited. So yeah, we're going to be doing that and I'll be helping uh, Franklin County hopefully navigate a somewhat so successful season. So we'll, we'll get see. back to somewhat yeah. successful yeah. season. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but let's segue, since we're talking uh, high school football right now, to the big game this uh, Friday night, the coffee pot matchup between Tullahoma and Coffee County. Um, I'm going to go out on a limb and say Coffee County's going to win by more than two touchdowns. What do you think? Uh, I'm you're kind of in agreement with mostly everybody in this community right now, unless there's some diehard fans from Tullahoma who think otherwise. Um, well, there always is in every town. There always is in every town, and I hate to burst the bubble for that certain fan, but yeah, this is going to be a little bit of a challenge for the Wildcats. Uh, the expectation is that Coffee County is going to come in here and dominate after they did last year. It's 42 nothing at halftime and ended up being 42 to seven final score. Tullahoma only played on the final or only scored on the final play of the game last year to cut in to get on the board. Well, so. I was looking at the power rankings. Um, I've been building the ultimate football contest, so we'd love for people to play our ultimate football contest this year. Uh, per the power rankings, they have. Tullahoma at 263 out of 345 potential high schools. Now that's A, double that's A, triple A. And that's on the total amount of schools in, this, in the state. Yeah, yeah. And, and in the 4A rankings, they're ranked um, seventh from the bottom out of every 4A school that's out there. Well, so wow. it's going to be tough. Do you think they'll think they'll have the same 0 and 10? No, you and I, I, I can't talking? see this team going 0 and 10. Uh, there are. Compared to last year, this is a more competitive group of kids out there. And, you know, you look at the preseason struggles that have been evident, but there's been also been a lot of injuries that have been there on the sidelines as well. Bryson Corn, who's supposed to be a tremendous sophomore running back who Coach Olive is high on, he's out. He's out for the first three weeks of the season. Uh, they'll, they're hopefully going to get him back whenever they travel to – or, excuse me, whenever they host Shelbyville at the fourth game of the season. So, uh, you know, it's just a matter of getting those injuries back, and then it's a learning curve. For a lot of these players on the varsity level are going to be sophomore players who were playing freshman football last year. And, you know, it's just going to be how quickly they can adapt to playing at the varsity level. Well, and I think we'll probably talk more about Tullahoma football as the season goes on. Um, your prediction on the game? Oh, I, yeah, I definitely see Coffee County winning. Uh, they are the more experienced. They have more depth. Um, so, yeah. But, you know, you say in that, and these, these freshman players moving up, that's, Franklin County is kind of in the same boat with that. And talking with Coach Smith, they have a lot of their guys who were on the freshman team who, who moved up. So you've got two really young teams who are just basically got to have the reps, take the snaps in order to get this um, experience, you know. Um, I think, though, if I could point out one thing, and when we've talked about, obviously, it, it becomes over and over again. but. These guys really need the community support. I think, if anything, more now than ever, they need to know that the fans are out here supporting them. And although it's, yeah, we're probably going to see more losses than we do wins on both Franklin County and Tullahoma, uh, they are building a program, and, and these guys will get better. But we all obviously need to support them. Well, now, we've talked a little about Franklin County, a little bit about Coffee County, Zach, and you, I'm going to go to you because you're probably a little more expert on high school football, I think, in, mm -hmm. in this area. I think you'll be there after yeah. a couple more seasons. But who is the team right now in our district to, to maybe move on? Shelbyville. Our, uh, Shelbyville lost quite a bit of players, but I still expect them to be pretty solid this year. Uh, Frank County impressed me last year in certain areas. If, if they can just 
put everything together, I think I think they'll be a pretty good squad. Coffee County, uh, you want to say will do well just because of the, uh, the talent they have, but they play exactly it's a tough schedule. They have to go against the Murfreesboro, or the Rutherford County schools, uh, which is not an easy task for. Uh, for Coffee County, so uh, I don't know if there is a strong powerhouse team from around this area, which which is great for competitiveness around this area. I think uh, Marshall County, I think, will be pretty good again. They believe in during the regular season lost only two games yeah. last year, uh, uh, made it to the second round of the playoffs before being eliminated. I expect good things from them. I mean, they were a pretty solid squad last year, and I, I think that's the nearest team to us that's going to be a quote unquote powerhouse around yeah. here. I agree. I agree. Well, guys, um, I guess let's get off of um, uh, high school football and let's move on to something that's near and dear to every single one of us. Yay. Um, let's <laughs> talk. Uh, uh, yeah, let's talk uh, college football for a minute. We, we, the season's just what two weeks off from the big kickoff. Days. Who's who's kicking off in the big game? Alabama and yeah, uh, Alabama and USC, which will take place at the big AT and T Center or not stadium at in. Uh, Dallas. Or Dallas, that's where it is. Arlington, I wanted to and say. And you were saying Ole Miss was playing? Uh, Florida State. Florida State. So that should be two good games to kick us off. And that, that, that'll that have ramifications down the road, too, because they, these you already have two losses. You're too big. They're all ranked right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, also somebody mentioned something about Clemson and Auburn's going to be playing early. Um, you know, it's going to really shake things up in the college world. Uh, Tennessee's ranked number 10 in the country, or in the coaches' poll. I didn't mm -hmm. look at the AP. Um, that's a good thing. Yeah, it's a good I, thing. I think they definitely can win the East. Um, I think they can win the SEC championship. Uh, I mean, if this year is the, to win the East, is this is Tennessee's year. If they're going to do it, this is their year because everybody in the East is struggling. Um, I think the name of the game in almost every SEC school, except for a handful, is a quarterback, their quarterback situation. Most of these quarterbacks are young. Uh, some of them are taking their first snaps. The Easton kid from Georgia, who everybody is praising high I'm, and just going nuts, he's he did great in the spring game, but nobody's gonna he's not taking the SEC snap yet. Mm -hmm. So I think that's going to be the the real struggle is for everybody to find a quarterback of, of, that's really just strong. Even Alabama's facing that situation right now. It's about the only situation they're they're having to face. They're deep everywhere else, but uh, the name the, the I think the theme to it all this year is finding a good quarterback, except for us who has Joshua Dobbs. Well, Zach got some good news. Um, I read that uh, the uh, was it the Big Twelve? Is that your conference yeah, out there? That'll be my conference. Uh, aren't they adding a championship game back yes. in 2017? Yeah, I was gonna say after this following season, they should be adding. They a new, should. They <laughs> should be adding. Yes. All right, hold on. Conference <laughs> championship. So that'll help whenever it comes to the end of the season and whenever it comes to picking those top four teams. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I think you have to have that. I think there was a little controversy last year. I think Oklahoma probably ultimately deserved to be in the position they were in. However, it just takes the controversy out of the equation. Yeah. Um, let's see, any surprises you see out there? I mean, we had Memphis and Houston last year. I think they got Ole Miss's ranked pretty high, so that's that's a team surprise. Well, Memphis's coach is now at um, – oh, my goodness gracious. You're blanking and I'm blanking. That's not a good time. We talked about this the other day, and I said I had forgotten all about it. Well, maybe one of our callers will call in and let us know. Yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, to move on, um, you know, Florida State, I see them. I think they're ranked two or three in the country and whatnot. That I'm, I'm making this ultimate football game, and I'm picking games throughout the year to, to pick. And I can't put Florida State in it because they don't play anybody other than mm -hmm. Ole Miss all year long, it seems like. And they'll play Florida at the end of the year. I think one of the biggest shock you brought, you wanted to talk about surprise teams, Houston again. It should be on everybody's yeah. radar. I mm -hmm. think uh, they start off, I believe, kicking off against Oklahoma and in Houston. So I think that'll be a tough game, tough, underrated game for the Sooners, for my yeah. Sooners. <laughs> so, so I wouldn't be surprised. Well, Houston's ranked in the top twenty. I think they're, they're like the thirteen 20? or fourteen. So well, they deserve yeah. it. Tom yeah. Herman's done a tremendous job down there at the University of Houston. Yeah, it, there's, it's going to be interesting to say the least. Um, what about MTSU this year? They should uh, actually be a pretty decent team, I think. You'd think they'd be competitive, so I yeah. guess we'll just have to wait and see what happens. You never know with the team like MTSU what you're going to get until the regular season kicks off. So. Well, I'll also say too, for the SEC, I think the sleeper. Um, and I know we've, they've got a new coach and their quarterback, but um, while Georgia's down, they're not out. So if Nick Chubb recovers, I really worry about Georgia. 
I think you worry about in. any team that's yeah. uh, in the SEC on any given week, um, especially a week that. Except for yeah. South Carolina, I'm not worried about them at all. <laughs> They're <laughs> well, terrible. You're They're going to be terrible. Um, well, <laughs> let's. Uh, I, I think we're all saying we're excited about college oh, football. Oh goodness, yes. Um, we got about two more weeks for the kickoff, mm -hmm. and we'll be all glued to the TV. Uh, let's uh, get ready to wrap this up and finish on uh, the Titans. Um, you know, they had a decent draft year. I don't particularly know why they picked a running back, but he looked pretty good in the first game. I was about to say. Yeah, um, I think it's a smart move. So maybe add some excitement. I can see the Titans, you know, from watching their preseason game, I could actually see them getting to almost eight. Well, you got to remember, the AFC South had a pretty down year last year. So, if that stays the same, I mean, Houston didn't make too many moves. They added a quarterback this year uh, uh, with Brock Osweiler moving over for Broncos. But, I mean, there's plenty of question marks on how he's going to do. He was – if or, I mean, he, he played pretty solid for the Broncos, but he wasn't anything spectacular, you know. Yeah. So, it would be interesting to see how – how he does on the Texas squad, being that he's actually going to be more than likely the starter in them. Uh, so it'll be interesting. I think the Titans have a pretty good chance, though, if, the, if everything stays the same, the Colts, Texans, and Jaguars all have a down year like they did last year. I think, you know, there's – I don't think there's any – I think the Titans could make the playoffs. I mean – Well, I think they could. I mean, you're going to have yeah. to – some things are going to have to go their way. They're going to have to get some bounces and whatnot. But yeah, this but is just one of the additions that they've made this this nah, offseason. they made some moves. Yeah. Some I think it'll be better moves. football than it was last year for sure. Anything you could get been much better. Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, um, I guess I'm uh, trying to be optimistic. Well, you know, and the good news is we we may have some tickets. You know, we have tickets oh. here at the Telehoma News. Uh, we may be doing some giveaways with ah. uh, Titans tickets. So maybe even I can. Um, talk our boss into giving us a set of tickets that we could give away to some of our viewers if we actually nice. have any. Yes. <laughs> nice. yeah, we might find out if yes. we actually have any viewers. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, anyway, folks, uh, we appreciate you guys uh, joining in with us again this year. Uh, this is week one of probably the next 15 to 16 weeks. I'm going to have to put up with y'all that long. There you are. Oh, you are, Callie. I'm here with Zach Birdsong <laughs> and Callie Bradford, and uh, let's go football. What do you yes. say? Thank go you, guys. Football. All right, see you.